and very low tech. Um, I've been sat here all day and I had a speech, I had a talk and the talk's gone out the window because there's so much gone on here today, so much that's really uh, inspired me and made me think in lots and lots of ways. And some of it's been inspirational about new things and some of it's been confirmational uh, because like Richard said, you know, I see the world in a slightly slanted way. Now he's the one to talk because how did I get here in the first place, right? I met him in a pub in Scarcroft, which is a bit like Seacroft, only posh. And he said, um, do you believe in free speech? I said, yeah. And he said, well, you do one for me. <laughs> now, I had no idea. And I, I had no idea that I was going to talk about a revolution in education until I saw it in the title of the, uh, 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 the, the talk. So what I'm here to do is, is get you to try and think about this huge problem that I've got, how to change the world. Now, I've just looked at it and I'm thinking, how am I going to do that? But somebody said earlier on, you've got to think big and start small. And I'm starting small. And I'm starting small in Seacroft. But it doesn't help you very much if you don't know where to start. So ever since, well, ever since, ever since I found Douglas Adams. Anybody heard of him? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No? Yes. Thank God for that. Right, he's got this thing, and it's not actually in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's, it's Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Right? In fact, it's not even that. It's the long, dark tea time of the soul. But there's a thing called Zen Navigation. Now, Zen Navigation is you follow a car, or its nearest equivalent, that looks as though it knows where it's going. You may not get where you intended to go, but you'll nearly always get somewhere you really needed to be. Now, I've started looking at this in terms of changing education. Because I've got kids in Seacroft who don't live in any kind of condition. Well, actually, some of them do. Uh, the conditions that you've seen on the, uh, on the screen here today. But how do you get them involved in education when they've had three or four generations of worklessness? How do you get them involved in an education where they're going to be getting five GCSEs, including English and Maths, but haven't got a job at the end of it. How do you get them an education where the only way out of where they are is through education, but they're scared to succeed? Now, these are kids who've been brought up with the technological generation. These are kids who have got a phone in their hands. If they haven't got a phone in their hands, they're uncomfortable, they're ill, they don't feel right. These are kids who have got all the advantages of technology, but don't actually get anything out of it. These are the kids who can't problem solve. In fact, it's a problem to think that there's a problem because somebody's going to think I'm daft or somebody thinks I'm stupid or whatever else it might be. They haven't got the confidence to deal with the kind of technology that they've got. And what do they use it for? Texting each other about what? Using these sites, Facebook and things, I hate them. Actually, you can't live without them. But personally, in my job, I hate them. How do you change the way those kids think? The only way you can do it is change the way education is delivered, because education is like that, linear. And why is it like that? Because the government basically says, these are the things we can measure, these are the easy things we can measure, and everybody knows about education because we've all been through it. But actually, think back to your education. What was the good bits? What was the bits that you really enjoyed? What was the bits that actually inspired you? That's what I'm about. How can we begin to inspire people? So I followed uh, Douglas Adams' advice, um, and I followed something that looked as though he knew where, where it was going. I followed a canal barge. See the link to water waste. <laughs> right. And I met another ex-policeman, a fellow called Trevor the Boat, and he lives in Murfield, which isn't far away from here. And he... Uh, introduced me to the, the delights of the canals. Now, I hadn't thought about canals. Never even considered canals. How many of you have sort of been around a canal near you? Mm -hmm. Right. Why did you go there? You put your hand up. Yeah. For why? Excellent. Right. Somebody else up the back. Give me an answer. 
Social. What, how do you mean? Come on, give me some information. I'm an ex-police officer. I'll interview you. <laughs> yeah. Where were those canals that you went to? Out in the country, in the middle of urban deprivation, in, in the backyard of a, of a, of a derelict uh, factory? Yeah? So you can see it. My kids never go. The nearest they go to a canal is, well, it's 20 minutes away, so they won't even cross the main road, never mind go 20 minutes away to a canal. But 80% of our urban population is within 40 minutes of a, of a waterway. What was the waterways created for? Transport. To drive the Industrial Revolution before the, the railway sort of appeared, right? What we've got is a huge network that was used to drive an industrial revolution. And what do we need at the moment? We need another industrial revolution. Now, it may not be the same kind of heavy industries, but we certainly need jobs, and we certainly need to open people's minds to opportunities. 95% of our waterways, the commercial um, potential of our waterways, is unused. So that's where following the canals barge has brought me. And what I'm here just basically to talk about is one little project Thinking big, starting small. So what we're going to do, I bought a canal barge, and we're leasing two other canal barges. And what we're going to do is develop a whole system of education based on the canals. Because one of the things that those of you who have experienced the canals will have is that feeling of, oh, you get on a boat, you sit by the water, you calm down. And most of the time in education, you're fighting to get people engaged. So what you've got to do is generate, generate an environment where people are easier to talk to, where people are more open to information, to sharing, which is what we've been talking about today. But the other thing is, education is delivered by teachers, and teachers are taught. They're taught how to teach. Now, the best teachers forget about all that and, and, and teach in different ways. But people work along straight lines, largely. And what we've got to do is break that open. So one of the other things that sort of got me interested involved in, 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 in this kind of process is the information and the learning that can come from other places. Now, I've sort of been walking around talking to people, not so much today because I was too nervous, but over the past few weeks. And over the past few weeks, people said, this is a great idea. Yeah, we want to get involved in that. And that's people you know, like the Canals and River Trust. That's people like Scottish Waterways. Uh, that's people like Yorkshire Water are showing an interest. That's people like uh, industrialists and factory owners and managing directors who've got nothing to actually do with the waterways because what they're seeing is if they can get young people coming in to the workplace thinking about, well, actually, I can go and do that kind of work because when we opened six years ago, every boy was going to be a footballer and every girl was going to go into hair and beauty or childcare. Yeah, now we've got kids talking about, um, I want to be a doctor or I want to be an architect or they want to be an engineer. The problem is they haven't got any realistic job knowledge of what that's about. And as soon as you get to that stage where that realism of the work that's going to take comes in and what you've got to do to get there, oh, well, it's easier not to. So what we've got to do is get the kids earlier and drive them forward using old technology. Because what happens with old technology, you've got to get your hands dirty, and they like getting their hands dirty. You've got to talk to other people which is something you don't do necessarily by Facebook or Twitter or whatever. It's actually human interaction and build confidence and build things going forward. Now, I don't know whether it's going to work, but for the last three days, I haven't got home before half past midnight because I've been trying to get a bid in to the Department for Education for £1.2 million to set this project up. £1.2 million we talk about sustainability. 1.2 million pounds is what it costs in my area to have 64 or 65 young children who are disengaged from education in specialist provision for three days a week for two years. 1.25 million pounds. If we can get kids involved in real work focused projects that they can enjoy, that they can play with when they're younger, where they take things on um, slightly differently when they're bigger, all of a sudden, we're building people who are good enough for the workplace. We are building people who've got good enough social skills to be able to cope in the real wide world. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm talking about. I've got two minutes left because I could talk forever about that bit. But the last where I want to finish it off is that 
You are people who've got access to learning environments that kids like mine, and I don't just mean this should be just for me and for our area, but you've got access to those learning environments. What I want you to do is think about how you can help develop a society in the future where you're getting what you need for your businesses, but actually you're giving, you're, you're giving things back. Your social, what do you call it? CSR? Corporate social responsibility. So lots of things being done, lots of little one-off projects, but it needs to be joined up. And to me, that's the big thing about the waterways. That's the connectivity. The waterways across the northeast, the northwest, the Midlands, down to the southwest, down to the southeast rather, is full of waterways, navigable waterways. The connections are already there. We can take this thing and we can grow it and grow it and grow it and grow it and grow it. Now, it's only little things here. It's doing the small things that are really going to make a difference, make it big. That's what we're here for. That's what it's all about. And thank you for listening to me.